The River City Wrestling Con is happening June 8th and 9th at the World Golf Village in St. Augustine, Florida. Visit RiverCityWrestlingCon.com for more information and tickets. I'm telling you right now, brothers and sisters, this is going to be the biggest and best River City Wrestling Con ever. Guests scheduled to appear include the icon Sting, Trish Stratus, Devon Dudley, Big Vito Lagrasso, Lita, Booker T, the Hardy Boys, and so much more. But get this, there will also be live wrestling action. Fish and Pro Wrestling Champion Tiffany Nieves takes on Ruthie J. We also have Scotty Sosa going to be taking on the TNA Knockouts Champion Jordan Grace. We also have the gold medalist herself, the suplex queen herself, Tiny Thonnelly. She'll be in action. Once again, folks, World Golf Village, St. Augustine, Florida, June 8th and 9th, the River City Wrestling Con, RiverCityWrestlingCon.com for ticket information. Check it out. That's right. Look at what we have here, folks. To the only show that matters. The cream of the crop. Duke loves wrestling. And there is no one that does it better than your host. I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. The Duke. And I'm all out of bubble gum. All right, brothers and sisters, you know that um, I can't go too long without bringing back one of the more frequent guests in the history of Duke Loves Wrestling, somebody who you all know, a lot of you love, a <laughs> lot of you love to hate, a, a lot of you, uh, you take it episode by episode, day by day. It's like, I love Gomez, I can't stand Gomez, what's Gomez up to? That's the thing, no matter which side of the fence you're on, everyone's always asking me, what's Gomez up to? What's up with Gomez? And... I think that that's a, a testament to this guy just being somebody that people can't look away from. It, it just is what it is. So certainly this is a long time coming. Without further ado, welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling, Jeremy Gomez. What's going on there, Gomez? I am doing well. Thank you for having me back, sir. Um, what's going on, man? Been a bit? Been a bit? Yeah, it's been a bit. I mean, there's this, you know, in, in my world, I know there's a lot that's happened. Um, since the last time you were on, and, and certainly in your world, there's a lot that's happened. So, yeah, I I gotta ask you this: you you are this is the most Zen Gomez I have ever spoken to. That that's my impression right now. I right? agree. This is like soup. I, I, I what kind of weed are you are you uh, consuming these days, sir? Because it, it's it, this is the Zen stuff, right? I have um I have guava gas right now from Grow Healthy, the best place in the fucking world. Okay. Um, okay. No, we're we guava gas. no, I have guava gas from Grow Healthy. I don't care. I've got a fucking license for that shit. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, it doesn't phase me anymore, man. I'm an old man, brother. So that ain't it. It isn't. It isn't the weed. Um, nothing. We've been shit. I guess we already kind of segued into it. I, we've been doing some other stuff in our life other than entertaining people, and it's got a lot of traveling and a lot of being with family and chilling out and giving a fuck about me more than I care about everybody else. Not that I don't care about everybody else, but, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm good. I'm good. It's nature. I think honestly, well, this is an interesting concept and I, and I want to, I'm going to ask you directly about what you've been up to lately, but before I get to that, I, I want to set it up with this question first here, the challenge of balancing family life, and making sure that at the end of the day, your family is all right and on the same page with you while managing all of these different businesses that you have and all these different business opportunities that you're involved in. Yeah. It ain't easy. And I, I can speak from experience. It ain't easy. Um, but today, don't tell me so much about the past, but today, do you feel like you found a good balance? Yeah, I've... I've um... I, you know, my wife is a big part of my life, obviously, Candy. Um, it took her a while <laughs> to teach me how to 
live my life in a better way. I don't know if it's the right way, but guess what? It's her way and happy wife, happy life. And it's pretty good. It doesn't really ever steer me wrong, but uh, it took her a while to help me see what's important. And uh, at first I thought being married and having children was like, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little older and, and you know, I, I come from watching how other people did it. And, you know, to me, the most important thing I thought was always make money, work more, make money, work more, make money, make money. You know what I mean? That's just, I, I, I think maybe also from doing that all the time, I've got a little more money and now I've been able to not have to make money every second. And even though I still want to, I wake up early in the morning saying, damn, I need to make more money today. I need to make more money, even if I don't really need to, but you know, after the pandemic and all you want to be ready, but my, my wife has instilled a lot of family values into me. Not that I didn't have them before, but um, so it's just, yeah, it, it was very hard at first to balance, you know, but my girls are awesome. And my wife's awesome and they like to do cool, cool stuff. So it's, it's become a lot easier. I'm, I'm, and I'm getting older. So I guess I'm a little smarter, a little wiser once in a while. So once in a while, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Once in a while, it's just, it's become more, I, I've been doing big events, you know, outside of wrestling. I, I, I've been doing wrestling. I've been doing what for six years with a two year break. <laughs> when I was retired, um, the other job doing large scale events and all over the country and breaking world records and organizing hundreds of different business owners come together under one goal and do something and entertain everybody and make everybody happy. That's what I do in my real life. Um, it's, it's, it's takes a toll and I'm trying to get away from the big crowds and all that now. So yeah, I'm going in a different direction. So yeah, it's just, you know, you get older, you do different things. So I'm, I'm starting to learn to relax and take things in more. And, and I have a little leeway to do so. So that's what's, that's where it's going. Is it, is it difficult to focus on the things that are really making the biggest difference in your life? Cause let's, let's face it, you know, the food truck stuff, man, that, that makes the biggest difference in your life. There's no question about it. One time it was music. Uh, but the, but the food truck rallies and, and, and these large scale events that you, you're in the Guinness book of world records, you're literally somebody, yeah. uh, historically. Thank you. Right. So, so this I is a so. difference maker. You know, you know I guess so. is, uh, it, is it, is it, is it hard to find balance with that compared to the things that, you know, you, you, you love and have a passion for like, like wrestling. But it's like, you know, wrestling has so much drama and and yeah. and, and I'm not even talking about in still, the ring. I'm talking still about outside less than, the ring. <laughs> still less than food event drama, man. Still less than food event drama. So I'm still prepared. Really? I, I'm surprised oh, right. to hear that. You know, rest, wrestlers are wrestlers, man. They're, they're you know, their brand is them. You know, their office is them, their body, them, their, their bag, their body, their shoes, their feet, their car, their ability to travel. That's them. The, you know, I, I, I work with, I mean, my next event has... My next chocolate festival, let's say chocolate festival. And by the way, I'm, I'm moving away from, I've been moving away from food trucks for a while because our festivals got to the point where everybody wanted to be involved. So like our next festival has 200 different vendors. So I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, 200 business owners plus that have mobile businesses that bring their whole stores with them or cook there or doing everything, their, their entire brand and everything moving. So I'm always dealing with the logistics of that. And obviously, people always at a festival. People want to be in the best spot. People want to be blah 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 blah. So I'm I'm always dealing with the drama of those people and the fights going on there. And like people take legal actions and try to cancel people online. It's like it, wrestling is the purpose is to entertain these people's purpose. It, it might be entertainment at the festivals for everybody else, but their purpose is to make money, and that's their life. And they take it as seriously as the wrestlers do. So there's there's like drama there. It's crazy, you know, wrestling. <laughs> A pick on Joey Janela once, where one time said was picking on me because he didn't know what I did, and Joey was like, "Oh, well, uh, I've wrestled in front of five thousand people, dude. I do events with one hundred and seventy five thousand attendees and stuff like that, man. <laughs> so, I mean, think of all the logistics and crap involved in that. So, it's like what I do at wrestling is just a microcosm. What do I do in my real life? It's organization and it's organizing people and entertainment. But it's like it's the food world is so much bigger, and I've been doing that for." 15 16 years now from florida all the way up to missouri to michigan to um uh, where else have we gone up there um uh, we did that huge event in detroit which also michigan i know there um it's it we, we go all over the place and it's you know two thousand three thousand four thousand miles from home and back doing events and it's just 
you know, it's, it's, that's, that's what I do. So the drama involved in that is, is huge. It's a regional drama between f- foodies. Like there's just, it's, it's not even just, con- like I say, it's not even just confined drama, like this foodie from this state or this business from this state. I'm dealing with like companies like cross states that want spots and events and don't want these people to be there and branding and blah, blah. It's like my, my world outside of wrestling is like a Burger King and McDonald's drama. That's a good way to say it. It's like picture always being in the middle of corporate food and, and, and that kind of stuff fighting all the time for position and for power. And that's the world that I have to like logistically keep sound and keep contained. And that's what I have to put out to people. So wrestling's easy. The drama and wrestling people bad mouth me and talk. Oh, he hasn't had one success. Not single one. Mr. Nemi. Oops. Sorry. I dropped on his name. You know, people talking shit about me like that. It's like guys, like you're talking about, I haven't had success in wrestling because it's my side job, brother. Like you haven't had success in the real world, like I freaking have. So it's just it's small. I brush it off. Well, I, I wonder about that. You, you, you just said you brush it off. You 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 can't hold on to that too hard when people talk to you that way because it'll it, it, drive you nuts. It used to, but now, like you're saying, is it hard? No, because I'm at a place now where my family is the most important thing in the world to me. And like, you can say whatever the fuck you want to me. It doesn't matter because my family thinks this of me. So it's like, whatever. It's invalid. I already know the truth. Kind of. There it is. There it is. Yeah. You, you, you knew where I was going before I even finished it. So that's, yes, there it is. Yes, sir. There it is. Because it's easy. So, I mean, it's easy to see once it happens, the change. So, you know. I, I know you can tell, and you know what it is. So, you know, it's easy to it's easy to know where you were going with that. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the You're thing: a very I mean, astute person. I know it. <laughs> you know, you, you you aside from the fact that you've been on the show so many times through the years, um, so we've gotten to know each other this way, mm-hmm. but also the the countless conversations we've had that are not recorded, where we really, Thank really God. go deep. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So it's so it's yeah, I I get it. I get it 100%, which is why I said this is Zen Gomez 100%. There's no question this is. Yeah, I'm good. Now. And, and on top of that now, also, the wrestling promotion is, and I'm sure we'll get into that drama before, the wrestling promotion is, my locker room is so chill. Um, I've got somebody doing the booking for me now, August Artois. Um, and is, you know him. He's brash as can freaking be. But, man, that dude can cook, and he – is a, a go-getter and organized and, and, and does what he's supposed to without having to be asked. And it's just, it's, it's helped keep an eye. And I don't mind saying this, it's helped everything go even more smoothly. And we're just in a good place, man, where I'm not financially getting killed by making dumb decisions. We have people around us that aren't, that are actually thinking about the product as a whole, instead of just, Oh, spend money, spend money, spend money, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's all smooth. There hasn't, other than that initial drama that came from outside of our locker room over some dumb shit, like it's gone so smooth. So we've only had two shows back, but it's just been smooth and awesome. So I haven't really had to, I don't know. It's all, it's always the external drama. Not, it's never real drama coming from inside the company because people inside, and I say the company people inside my company as me as a person or people that work around me or under the umbrella of generation entertainment or generation championship wrestling or, or we walk together.com or freaking nature and show 4k or Tampa Bay pillow fight league or so many other things that we do. They don't complain because they know it's, it's, you know, we're good. Everything's good. We're chill. I'm pretty chill. You had a you had a situation uh, months back where everyone was talking about you. <laughs> literally, everyone literally. was talking about you. Literally, and even other wrestlers who who you know they they <laughs> they got a little bit of a name for themselves out there. Hammerstone, you know, here's a guy who who went on and did a live on his own social media, two and a and, half minutes. Yeah, and, and did a whole <laughs> rant about you Thanks. and and here's here's what i'll say to that and and look hammerstone that week too. thank you hammerstone Hammer. you know i'm not i'm not seeking out a live about me from you so don't don't take this the wrong way i'm just acknowledging what happened Wait, but here's what i'll say mon- is your page monetized i i know that's a good point it, it needs uh, to be uh, right again thank you hammerstone for making a two and a half minute video about me my page is monetized and you made me quite a good chunk of thank you yeah continue yeah. but go well, ahead let him <laughs> here's what I'll, here's what i'll say to that <laughs> You got to really matter for somebody to take that time out of their out of their life to do that. Like you said, I mean, everyone who follows him, who pays attention to him, who knows who he is, 
he took all of that audience and then directed them to you. Yeah, and he didn't need to. He's higher up on the rung, higher up on the ladder, man. Like that was. I, I hope after the, and I, I think it's still there on his page, but I hope that he watched that back or somebody told him that, like, bro, you just put this fucking heel over. And I, I hope that he realized that, like, he doesn't need to do that anymore. He's 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 higher up and he's going places, so he didn't need to do that. That was whatever. You know what I mean? But he did. I agree. See, that's what he I did. Agree. He like, but he's you know what? And I hate to say this. I, I say this a lot. He's young, and I can say that now because I'm getting old. He's young, and he did. He he just probably didn't even think it through. He's just adrenaline, other things. They get you hyped up, and that's fine. But you know, thank you. He he got a little worked. A lot of people got worked. Like as you said, people that you wouldn't have expect to think that what was going on was real. I mean, maybe I should let you preface what happened first. You know, well, I mean, let's let's call it what it is. You 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 had a big blow up with a, a bunch of people, and you said you're done with it, and, and you went off online, and then people <laughs> came on this show, yeah, and and called you out, and they talked about board of directors and all this other <laughs> stuff, and and you know, everyone for the most part, they were like, wow. This, this is okay. Gomez finally pissed people off too much. This, this is the last straw. See, I told you about that Gomez guy. I told you, you see, look at him yeah, now. Now the God. board of directors have stepped in and they've done something about it. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, damn, okay, well, let's let's see where this goes. Right? So <laughs> then it's it. revealed that it was it was a work, right? Yeah, man, of course it was a work. An unintentional one, might I add. Let me let me, because for the people that still think I started this work and, oh, fuck Gomez for doing it. By the way, I, I, first off, I want to applaud something, not to me, but to everybody that was actually involved in it. That was actual wrestling storyline actually happening on the indies that crossed counties, crossed state, crossed the country. That was actual proof that actual wrestling entertainment, and I don't mean like wrestling entertainment, like wrestling, like WWE wrestling entertainment. I mean like actual entertaining storylines can happen on the indies and they can transcend cities. And so I, I just want to applaud everybody that was part of that because that was awesome, man. We're telling a story and we're entertainers and that's what the fuck we're supposed to do. And it happened. And I'm not blowing my own horn because here's what happened. Um, Initially, when I unretired and was coming back to wrestling, I don't know if everybody knows this, but the last champion we had, and I'm not going to name names, it's cool, it doesn't matter, um, didn't relinquish the title. And I was retired, so at the time I was like, (laughs) whatever, keep it, keep the belt. I'm not coming back to wrestling, I don't give a fuck, right? So um, Storm Thomas had actually at one point didn't want the belt, even when I was retired to be with that person, he wanted to be back because storm has been with me. Storm Thomas has been with generation championship wrestling since GCW one. And he, he had never won the title even. Well, that's not true. He did win the title once for seven seconds. Anyway, storm is my arch enemy in wrestling, but in real life storms can awesome. We're cool. Um, so when I came back, uh, we were going to do a storyline or something that like, um, I'm the evil owner and that um, Storm had actually bought the title back from somebody else. And, oh, he foiled me, the evil owner. So when I was coming back, we accidentally made the flyer with Storm Thomas on the front. But it hadn't been revealed yet that Storm Thomas was coming back to the company and had the belt. So we we were being stupid, me and um, Chris Rex, who does all our flyers, always. They're awesome. We were like, oh, shit, we can't put Storm on the flyer. But we need to advertise. We'll just put you on the flyer. Everybody hates that. Like, you're right. Everybody hates that. <laughs> it's Mr. Gomez. He shouldn't be on the flyer. So let's put him right in the middle of the fucking flyer. And that was it. It was an accident. Storm was supposed to be on the flyer. I was just being stupid. And I hadn't done wrestling in two years. So I accidentally put the guy that wasn't reintroduced to the company on the front of the flyer before he was reintroduced. So we just, Chris had a picture of me. Like oh, from a long time ago when I was thinner, a lot thinner and in shape. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Was if that if there was any picture that was supposed to circulate, I appreciate that being the one. So it was just a thing, and I had been gone for so long that I didn't think anybody gave two shits about Generation Championship Wrestling anymore, right? So we put the flyer out, and holy crap, like people got so pissed off. And then Storm, being the freaking being the awesome person that he is, he was like, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this better. I'm going to go on social media 
and freaking talk shit about you for just the storm's idea. This wasn't my idea. Uh, I'm going to talk crap about you. And then we're going to get that going. And then August on came on board with the company. Um, and, and they took it from there. In fact, I literally told them like, listen, because first off I have a big mouth and <laughs> August and storm are the people that got me to shut my fucking mouth, stop talking shit all the time, stop getting heat all the time, like a fucking dumbass heat magnet and just learn to work and let the guys work more. But you know, there was a while where I was the only one in the company that anyways, long story short, they're the guys that got me to calm down. So I told them, I was like, literally like you guys are going to write the story. You're going to produce it. Um, I don't even, I don't want to have any hand of it to the point that literally a store made the flyers, the, you know, those the corporate uh, generation um, entertainment board flyers. And every time I said something for like a three month period, August was the person that wrote it, handed it to me, well, handed it to me, texted it to me. And I said exactly what he typed to the, to the T. So they were the ones producing it. Mikey Spandex was even involved in it um, for a time. Everybody pretty much ever, first off, everybody on the show, everybody on the generation championship wrestling show knew that it was a work and they shut their mouths about it. Right. Everybody that had any filming or anything, right. They all shut their mouths about it for once through all the crap, everybody talking crap about me. Anytime I ever responded, that was somebody else writing it. So, and it just, it blew up because I, I, you know, everybody was just waiting for me to blow up and go ape shit like I used to do. And I wasn't going to do that anymore. Mr. Gomez wasn't going to be that Mr. Gomez anymore. He just never was. I didn't want to be that Mr. Gomez in the first place. That was like, I, I didn't want to be the star of the fucking show. I want to be the evil boss in the background here and there cameo, but I didn't want to be the star. That's what, unfortunately I had made it. And my ego had made it before I retired. So it just wasn't the case. So everybody was waiting for me to blow up and I just didn't. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe you should interject here. So I don't keep talking. Like it just, it, because you, I don't know, people were calling you, people were calling me, and it was starting to get, people were starting to get really personal online and uh, degrade me, not only just me, me as a person, like me, Jeremy Gomez, not Mr. Gomez, taking shots at my family, it just everything, taking shots at the people on my show, and it was, just, it, it, it was weird, man, for a while, but I mean, it was from here all the way to California, to Vegas, to freaking up north, and you know about people that were complaining about all over the place. I, yeah. I was getting messages from China, and I'm not and, I, and I'm not saying that uh, jokingly for anybody who is new to this show. I, I literally, not only do we have listeners in China, we we yeah. cover wrestlers in China. So yeah, there's <laughs> legit. And, and and that's the other thing. It's not just regular listeners, but actual wrestlers and promoters. Yeah, like from names, all the major promotions, folks. Every promotion that you can think of that's active right now and that is on TV. People from these promotions were hitting me up saying, hey, what's going on? Is this a work? And then it turned into, hey, I knew this guy was going to put himself in a bad shape. And that's what happens. You know, he's finally <laughs> getting what he deserves and all this stuff. The and I was just that I would never think would say that I'm not going to name him. But like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean some <laughs> some pretty some pretty big names, some pretty big like, names, including yeah, Hall of Famers. And it was flooring me because he like, and again, people were all showing me the messages they were getting, and I'm not going to drag anybody, but like just, and I, but I wasn't saying anything because I was getting such a kick of seeing like the the people and the caliber of superstars and the age of some people that were getting worked over by this. Like, holy crap, you guys are doing great. People are just eating this crap up. I love it. It was. Honestly, it was killing me not to be firing back at some of these people because that's just me, man. I'm kind well, of and, and it, you, you probably were better off just letting yes, it build because that, that's and, what it – And that's what Storm and August told me, and I, and, I, and I listened to them. And there was one time I didn't for like two seconds, and they even quit on me just to, just to freaking be like, fuck you. You're supposed to listen. Okay, we're back. Shut your fucking mouth. Like, okay, yes, sirs. Which is <laughs> – The, the realest storyline within the storyline. Jesus but Christ. It, but it worked. But it was just – it just all worked great. And the show went off great. And like, it was in the, it, it was, everything worked out great, man. Like, Oh, great. listen, he, he, here's what I'll say to that. You know, cause I should be pissed at you. <laughs> uh, this is, this is December, January, uh, uh, February. I should be pissed at you, but I mean, we're, we're in the middle of March. I mean, we're in the middle of May, I should say now. So it is what it is, but this show was basically ground zero for the progression of that entire angle basically yeah and it was fascinating 
now that I can look back on it, like, wait a second. Generation Championship Wrestling for months was legitimately one of the most talked about stories in all of wrestling. Yeah. Pe- people were talking about the drama and everything going on there and Storm being pissed and Ar- August sticking up for you and what the hell is going on with the board of directors. People were literally talking about this every single day yeah. for 90 days straight. And, and- Brother, I had to remember nobody knew I was back with the company because the board of directors had fired me. Number number one, guys, um, I'm a sole proprietorship. Um, There is no board of directors. Me and Candy have been running this company from the ground ourselves, Um, not to the ground, from the ground up ourselves for like, 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 I think 16 or 17 years, 15 or 16 or 17 years, sometime around that. Um, There's not a board of directors. We we're a family business. It's us. We barely even have any helpers. These, but we set up these giant festivals of like me and her, sometimes another helper. When the wrestlers come in, they set up the ring and they work there. But anyways, the point is, man, when we got to the festival, which the, our, our first show was in the middle of Chocolate Fest, there was a lot of people there. So I had to hide the whole time because people thought I was fired from my own company. Like I was getting messages like, are you fought? Are you? And I'm like, I can't talk about it because they did a whole thing where like I was, I had a gag order uh, at NDA. Imagine look at gag orders are a thing now, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hush money, all that shit. Anyways, I was supposed to shut my mouth and because I had a gag order on me. So like people would send me messages like my friends, um, Oh my God, you got fired from your, I can't talk about it, but blah, 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 blah. I can't talk about it. I can't for months. So when we got to the festival, everybody thought I was fired. So I had to hide in the back of the tent for like the whole setup of the festival, all the way up to the last match of the show. It was crazy, man. I mean, it, it was crazy. Now, listen, there's one person I'm going to say this right now and, and I'm, I'm putting it out there. I don't care. There was Get one him. person hey, go ahead. who absolutely kept saying to me, it's a work. You're a fool. If you, if you, if you think otherwise, it's a work, it's a work. <laughs> Literally tell me every day. I'm telling you, man, it's a work. Did, did, did you find out anything new? Because I'm telling you it's a work. Is it Rudy? Nope. No. Michael L. Ray. <laughs> Michael L. Ray wins the prize. That no, is the only man on he, the face of this planet you couldn't fool. For about, he was hooked for about two days. Because he was I posting. Think, yeah. yeah, yeah but I think posting. the thing is when I didn't respond to him like I would normally do. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> He's, I think... And as stupid as I fucking think he is, he's not all stupid. It's, a lot of it's an act, but you know, he's a fucking idiot. But anyways, it, he's the only one I think that's taught for a second. Like, wait the fuck a minute. Gomez, don't shut the f- Why would he let me say all this dumb shit? And I think at that point he realized, no, I'm, he's not responding to his fucking work. Gomez would never yeah. but, I, but to be fair, I just I was told not to respond either. So it was it was a work, but I wanted to respond to you, buddy. I just could not. I promised people I wouldn't, so. Whatever, well, Michael you Elray, mind. you you get the prize, brother. You you were on it. You know what I mean? I got to tip my hat to you. You were on it the whole way through. Yeah, man. Who uh, knew he actually has a brain? Let me see. <laughs> Listen, now, I think you and Michael Elray would actually get along. Smell, just learn to smell. Just learn to spell. Um, use punctuation, some commas here and there. Learn what to lo- run on sentences, and uh, you'll be good. You'll make it. I think way. you and Michael Elray would actually be good buddies. You 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 you'd blaze one yeah. together, and you oh just yeah. Laugh. No, I'm no, serious. I think, I, I think actually I'll knock his ass out. Believe that. Oh, there is. There, listen, listen. I don't care. He might be the greatest guy in the world, but all the shit he said to me in the past, that gets a receipt eventually, bro. Oh, man. Yep. I, I said we, it on live. Receipt. Stay away from me. Florida needs healing, especially after. I don't know if you saw this nonsense. That's with, heal with, shit. Uh, I just did heal shit. You heard me, right? I heard oh, you other healing. Okay, whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, Florida Wrestling Empire. Did you were you able to catch that whole comings and goings that happened with that whole situation there? I don't even know who that is, and that's not a dig. There's remember, there's like a hundred indie exactly. wrestling companies in Florida. Exactly. Well, oh, well, the, the thing about people didn't get paid. The people didn't get paid. Yeah, and I did that's, the episode on that, and that was interesting. Yes, and, and to be a hundred percent honest, and I and I, I heard about it, but I am. And this might sound stupid after I just said, I'll knock a dash out. That's a personal thing. Um, I, I've been doing my damnedest to stay out of every other company's business, man. Like, because I'm just, like you said, I'm just, I'm not, not there anymore. But like, I heard about it and just look, guys, pay your talent. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like, and don't, talent, don't promote if, you, your if you can't do it. Yeah. If, if you can't pay your talent, talk to your talent, 
check in with your talent, let them know what you're going to do, get a pay schedule. Even if you have to pay $5 at a time, $2 at a time, just if you, dude, people run out of money, it happens. Be fucking professional about it. That's fair. You know? and, and, and listen, to his credit, you know, the guy that runs Florida Wrestling Empire, uh, he has gone back. He's been apologizing to people and he has been paying them since being on this show. So I will Good. say he's at least putting in effort to make things right. I've been so, there, man. I've been there. You know, after we did a show after it was one of our um, young our, our young lion shows, but we did a show right after COVID, and I flat. And this is about the time that I didn't know I was about to run out of money. I I got down to seventy dollars in my life with my damn, family after damn. COVID, and I could not pay all my wrestlers for a show. I thought I had more money. Swear to God, thought I had a lot more money to be honest. <laughs> but I I got with every single one of them after the show asked which one of you really effing needs it right now and which one of you can cut me some slack i stayed with them got every one of them paid and you just there's a way to do it and there's a there's a there's a way to realize that people realize somebody fucked up and there's a way to do it to seem like a dumbass you know what i mean just be professional if something happens be professional you know keep people in the loop don't make them call you get with them that's you know? fair that's fair listen i'm gonna i'm gonna throw a curveball at you and sure. I, i'm gonna I'm going to respectfully apologize ahead of time because okay. this is probably going to get a little emotional. All right. I'm gonna, um, I got my prime. I'm ready. Yep. And and this isn't <laughs> something that I've covered on the <clears throat> on the show yet. So you're actually the first person I'm going to cover. I'm going to bring this up about. Okay. Great. Our good friend, uh, Terry, Trey, from We Love Wrestling. Yeah, man. Has passed away. Yeah. And I don't I don't know the details of what happened. I'm not looking for the details of what happened out there, folks. So don't you're not going to get it here. It's none of our business. Um, But what is our business is that a great friend and and a great steward to promoting pro wrestling, women's wrestling, independent wrestling all over the nation. Uh, We tragically lost this guy. He was here and then he's not here anymore. Yeah. You were somebody, Gomez, that knows terry that you've interacted with him he's he's, yeah. he's covered gcw generation championship wrestling uh, um in fact i think you probably knew him before you knew me um you know what i think i did you're right you're right yes sir yes Just sir any any thoughts on any thoughts on the passing of, of, of i call him terry they I a did. lot of people know him as trey i just call him I, I call him terry as well yeah um see, we knew him like that like I didn't look. I didn't. I haven't tried to find out what happened either because I don't handle. I don't know if people know this. I don't handle death well at all. I tend not to even go to funerals because I don't handle death well at all. The 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 funerals that I'll go to next are when my parents die, and after that, you know, if if I'm alive when my siblings die, maybe those, you know, other people that are my close family, and I mean close, not cousins. Like that's funerals I'll go to. You know, I don't handle death well at all. I, I, I lose it. So I didn't really try to find out what happened other than that dude used to sponsor our shows. Um, he, used, he would fly to Tampa and cover our shows. He flew to Indiana to cover our shows. Um, and he didn't need to. He didn't know me from Adam and he would help us out. And he helped our women's division. He helped my company. Um, he, I mean... I, I, if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even have footage of us going to Indiana and some of these places because we just weren't there yet. So it's, and he did this for everyone. It wasn't just me. So, and it was a strain and he, and he did it anyways. So, man, I don't know what happened, but I do know that indie wrestling lost somebody that gave a fuck about indie wrestling and gave a fuck about the people in it and tried to help them and put them over and promoted them and never asked for a penny in return. In fact, like I said, he would give money to help indie wrestling. So, yeah, man, it sucks. It's one of those people that I wish, you know, the world would have given more time to because he would have he would have done more for even more people. But you know, we're getting older and we all have a finite time here, and just it's, it gets more and more as you get older. The good people start going. So, and Terry was one of them. So, um, yeah, I'm, man, I'm gonna make a statement out loud, and I and I feel I feel like I can make this statement to you. Because, you know, you you knew him very well. You had your own personal relationship with him. He covered your, like you said, he sponsored some of your events. He covered your promotion. And, and Helped us get so, over. 
definitely yeah, so I'm not I'm not just talking to some surface level buildings like helped us. Gen- and he, wow. again, did not need to. Did not need all. to. Yeah, yeah, but he did it. So I'm going to make this statement. His heart to a stranger. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make this statement. And if I, I'm not trying to offend anybody out there, folks. So if I inadvertently do that, I apologize ahead of time. But I'm going to make this statement. I feel comfortable saying it. Uh, with Gomez here because I know that Gomez knew him as well, and and it is what it is. Let me know what you think of this, Gomez. And if it, and if it's offensive, tell me it's offensive too. But let me know what you think of this. Even from the beginning, I always felt like Terry was moving out of pace and covering so many different wrestlers, so many different promotions, in so many different locales. And and you know, a lot of people were sending him footage too it wasn't just him going out there he had he had a team that was at different places but he was in a lot of places because you could see the he was in pictures in so you knew day. he was at these folk these places the, right in the same day multiple places sometimes in different exactly in different right cities in the same day at different shows crazy different crazy days. i i got the impression and i actually said it to him you know jokingly like, bro, you're moving like you like you're on borrowed time or something. What's going on here? Like you're always all over the place. You're always on the go. I literally have said that to him, and I and I always kind of felt that way. Like, man, this guy is moving like there's a there's a stopwatch. And he's just got to finish this race real quick. He's got to help as many people as possible, shine the light on as many people as possible, bring as many people as possible to the forefront so that they can get opportunities that they would have otherwise never been able to get without we love wrestling without Terry promoting them basically i felt like he he it was almost like he knew that the end was a lot closer than further away if I that's offensive gomez i want you to tell me that I that was i think it's offensive. offensive but if that's the case i mean that makes him even cooler you know what i mean like could have been doing could have been hanging out in the field watching butterflies, enjoying life. You know what I mean? Which not to, I, he was enjoying life. Don't like, don't take that the wrong way. But you know, he could have been chilling, relaxing. If he knew, that would be even cooler. But it's just he he I, again. He's part of entertainment, whether you like it or not. He's doing podcasts. He's doing interviews. He's doing. Sure. He's an entertainer. Sure. And entertainment, man. It takes a fucking. It takes a toll, brother. It takes a toll. That's that's. But we talked about it before. That's why I'm trying to move away from everything i'm doing because it takes a toll on you and your body and it's you know it's hard to stop doing so maybe it just got to the point where maybe you know maybe the body just gave gave out on him but he was he was wearing himself thin for the benefit of others like i said it was it was harsh but that's you got to admire shit like that because you know for for a gentleman going out doing what you love or doing what you love to the end it's like you can't ask for much more than that and i think at least he got to do it he was what he wanted to do and he was supposed to be doing until the end so sure i was just blessed Absolutely. to have a couple minutes out of his life you know that that's what i'm grateful for i'm blessed that he he took time out of his life for us it, it, that's that's all i could ask for man and even that being all i could ask for he still did so much more so yeah just you know, a, a a quality person really an angel um, what do they say man the good die young brother yeah, a certain low. He he definitely personified that for sure. Shout out to Terry. We love wrestling. Oh, everyone, all the loved ones there. His son, um, yeah. sorely missed. Yeah, that's that's one. I'll tell you, I, I lost another close family friend within a week. It, it, actually, they passed away first, and then I found out about Terry. I still haven't processed either. Too much. Too much, yeah, especially after COVID, bro. Too much. Like I said, I'm not good at yeah. I'm not good at the whole death thing, man. It is a lot to process. It's a lot. It's a, a lot. lot. And it, it's crazy, Gomez, because we just celebrated the eighth year anniversary of Duke Loves Wrestling. Been doing this show for over eight years. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you've been a major World. part of that, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's a fact. And and you know, I have a, a private Facebook group that was really the precursor of this. Facebook forced me to create that group because I was always tagging my friends who like to watch Raw and SmackDown every week. And I was getting in trouble for for spamming, right? Facebook thought I was spamming, so they were they were hitting me. And then I kept appealing to spam. And finally, literally, I actually got a person. This is before Facebook was all automated. I actually got a real person that says, hey, you're going to have to create a group and just invite all those people to be part of your group so we can stop 
uh, spam because if we if we hit you with another spam, we're gonna have to close your Facebook account completely. Oh, that's nice of them. And I was like, that on one hand, it's like I don't want a group, and on the other hand, it's like, well, at least I'm not losing my Facebook because I got my family and friends from friggin' grade school here, whatever. Anyway, that's how the group started, and then maybe a week or two later, I started the podcast. I have posted about pro wrestling to this group of people and also to the general public every single solitary day for over eight years. There's That's never, great. I've never missed a day. See, I've even took a, I've even retired in that part. In that Bro, time. you know that? Right? <laughs> Two years. I've never even missed a day, Gomez. Oh, you're doing pretty good, man. Am I doing pretty good or am I doing pretty bad? <laughs> pay attention, you know what I mean? Well, like yeah, and it's, it's, they're listening. it's here's, here's the crazy part about it. And again, I can say this to you because I know that you understand. There was a period of time when somebody let me know that it really meant something to them that I, I did the birthday post, you know, people's birthdays, happy birthday, so-and-so put up a couple of pictures of their favorite you know, whether it be their, their biggest crushes or or whatever, you know, they, themselves, they want to promote something. I do a birthday post, you know, and somebody the, said to me, they said, you yeah, know, the picture of Jeremy su- face superimposed on Roman Reigns body for his. Exa- that was awesome. Uh, yes, that was, that was horrible. Beautiful. I look like Drew McIntyre, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. You go actually ahead. did. Though. I did. Was, yeah. Yeah. So you, you were Drew McIntyre, Roman's body. Fucking so. <laughs> The person said to me, hey, just so you know, this means a lot. And I said, yeah, man, happy birthday, no problem, whatever. They was like, no, you don't understand. I don't have any more family. Like, everyone's gone. They either got old, passed away, the pandemic, everyone's gone. And if it wasn't for your birthday post where I have all these people from around the world saying happy birthday to me, I may have never gotten a happy birthday. And, and do you see why entertainment takes a toll on us? Yeah, you see that, why, that bro. It's like I don't swear on this show. That it fucked gets me to up. Be a responsibility after a while. That's and it. That's it. Yeah, you realize that you know you mean something to people and entertaining them, or just again, like I say, entertainment to me is you know suspending disbelief for just long enough so that people can forget what's going on in their lives and all the hardships and should even if just for a second. That's what entertainment is to me, is suspending disbelief so people can relax for just a second. And, and you doing that gave that person a moment's relaxation. And that's the fuck that's the reason we do it, man. Because it's a drug, but it's a good drug. But a lot of us kill ourselves doing it. And yeah. I don't mean like suicide kill ourselves. We wear our bodies and our souls ragged trying to make like you every day for eight years. That's hard to do, man. That is it, fucking hard to do. It's Trust impossible. Me. It's I've impossible. been putting the same three posts on social media for two years now, yep. and it's fucking hard to do, yep. you know. And that's just yep. in the morning, you know what I mean? And like, it's just it takes a toll, and that's, you know, at that that's the way it is. But it means something to people, so that's why we do it. And that's it. It's like once once you you realize you, you're just doing it. At first, you're just doing it. Oh, that seems like something cool. Let me try this out. And people respond, okay, they like it. I'll keep doing it. But then when you, when you hear that, then it's like, oh, this is a service. Yeah. Like, I can't not do this thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? In, the, in those moments when you miss somebody's birthday by accident, you know, you, you they, maybe you're not friends with them or maybe they, they their birthday is hidden or something like that. And then you find, oh, yeah, yesterday is my birthday. And then it's like, oh, no, I didn't put your birthday post up. You know what I mean? Uh, if there's a pay-per-view, hey, Duke, when's the pay-per-view post going up? And it's like, okay, I got to get that in. Even if you don't feel well, it, it it turns into something that it's bigger than you. You're doing it for others because you know that this is something that brings them some form of comfort and joy in an otherwise very difficult period in time for all of us. Yep. Right? So when I think about Jeremy Gomez, I didn't, I didn't want to make this all about me here, but when I think about Jeremy Gomez and I think about all of the different things that you are involved in, and look, Gomez, you know it. You're a pain in the ass sometimes. Horrible. Right? You, 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 you know what I mean? It's like you drive people nuts sometimes, and it is I what it do. is. Really but, could. brother, <laughs> you're always doing something that results in helping others. 
Yeah, bro, I got to level out the level of pain in the ass somehow, man. <laughs> I'm not even joking, man. There's a yin and yang to every like, you know, people can talk a lot of shit to me, and I don't really get, I, you know, I get a little bit mad, but like, I'm, I'm cool in five minutes, and my wife's always like, "Well, bro, how do you, how do you do that? How can you be so angry?" And then five minutes later, it's as if nothing happened. You're cool. It's like, it's like candy. I dish so much shit out that like, if I can't take it or I don't forgive people for the shit they dish out, like, what kind of a person would I be? It has to be a there has to be a balance somewhere there. So yeah. I, I guess maybe subconsciously I'm, it's not subconscious. I'm probably atoning for the life I lived up until I got older. You know what I mean? Because I might've grown up in a good family and I might've had what I needed because my dad and my mom busted their ass. But I, I don't, I don't really think I was a that good of a person until I met my wife and that was in my thirties. So I think, I'm, you know, I'm not robbing people and breaking laws and shit like that, but I just don't think I was, I don't know. Maybe I'm making up for the times that I could have helped more people or something. It's some level of atonement or some shit, but I've got to be doing, I got to be doing something for other people, not just for me. You know, it's fair. And you know what? That's not the first time you've said that. Yeah. And I'm trying to, and I'm doing my best to try to do more for me now. I really am. Uh, It's still hard, but it's uh, it's coming. Coming. It's coming. Coming. So so talk to me about the new thing, because we we, we danced around it a little bit. But what's the new thing that is is absolutely something for you and your family where it's like, yeah, "Yeah, this is apparently you got yet another job. So we started a YouTube channel. And at first it was just a um, what they call an ASMR channel, which is basically just like things that relax people like, you know, uh, we've got videos of um, of waterfalls that we just filmed that you can watch for hours at a time just listening to the water rain thing ever i mean the whole gamut of like things that can relax you green noise stuff like that etc cetera, etc cetera. beach scenes if sleep aids which we figured out that um i figured out that a lot of wrestlers actually listen to the sleep aid videos when they're making towns like because they're not at home so they need something to help them sleep so we do a lot of sleep aid videos that people can put on youtube at night it's just solid black and like waves crashing or fire crackling stuff like that but then it started getting to the point where now the page is almost monetized and it's only been three months, but the page is already almost monetized. So it's at like everything that I guess I start off doing as just a hobby. It almost always seems to become a job. And I guess that's still just the provider in me, but it's, we started doing a lot of walking, a lot of virtual hikes or walking down nature trails for miles. That's all. Um, but it's, it's gotten us more, I think back in touch with our family and it's getting to the point where the, the channel is about to take a branding swing to more of a variety channel with the premise being that we've been as a family doing this large scale festival events, large scale events for you know, 15, 16, 17 years now. And it's getting to the point where, and I'm, and I'm not talking about wrestling. I still enjoy wrestling, but it's getting to the point where the other world and me are just, I think it's getting to be too much and I'm trying to wind it down into another form of entertainment. Um, I, 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 sometimes I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. I'm not, I'm overreacting, but sometimes, you know, event promotion and event production is one of the most stressful jobs on the planet. You can look it up. Not, it's like top five, which is crazy, but been doing it for so long on such a high level with so many people. And it's always all about having to please people on a mass scale and the current world. I, it's just in my eyes, isn't really always agreeable anymore to fun. There just seems like everybody's and this, you would say that this is what people need entertainment now the most, but it's getting to the point where that form of entertainment on a mass scale mass, you know, five to 150,000 more people at any given point, it's, it's, it's just getting to be, I'm trying to move away from it. So we're starting the, the channel premise is like, we've done this and we don't want to do it anymore. So now we're branching out as a family doing other things like, Again, hiking things with the family, visiting places, taking trips to places. We don't, we're not doing food reviews, but you know, things that are beautiful to us. The channel is called Nature and Chill 4K. Um, it's pretty much nature and things that we like to do to chill. Um, but whatever it is, like so, something like I was talking to you recently, we started doing when we see people do things on the internet, we, you know, we're almost kind of like myth busting. You know, oh, can that be done or is that set up entertainment? So, like I told you earlier, I was, um, I was pulling fish traps out of the water. Um, we, we watch a YouTube channel. I think it's, I, I believe the young men's channel is big bass Productions. I don't even know the channel, but I watch it every day. Um, where this kid in South Florida just goes out and baits traps and puts them in like, like little ponds and wells and runoffs and drains and stuff like that. And catches these amazing, like, like aquarium fish and Oscars and chicklets and all these things that are thousands of dollars in fish. So it was getting to the point where I was like, 
that must be fake, man. So let's go try to do it. So we've been doing that. So like right before I got on the interview with you, I was at a, at a, like a spillway pulling fish out of a trap out of the water. And like the dude is definitely better than me at it, but like I'm pulling like aquarium fish out of, out of like drains and shit like that, man. It's, it's, we just, just filming different things and like just stupid shit like that. Things that aren't so trivial and people don't need to make a big deal about it. Just fun things. And I think it's gotten us closer as a family and definitely spending more time with them hours on end, um, which is fucking great. Cause they're awesome. And just, that's, just doing stupid things like that we bought some new drones and some ai drones and some new cameras and i don't know if people knew this but before i was into music i was um what i went to school for was industrial design technology which is like movie effects and and editing and stuff like that i was basically a a movie nerd um producing and crap like that and it's i had gotten away from that for so long with the music and this and that that i think i'm moving back into I, it's crazy at 45 years old and my wife's a little older than me that we're that we're making a go at doing like a, a youtube channel but the crazy thing is that like people are following it like we'll go up 500 fo- subscribers a day sometimes a thousand subscribers a day i think we've been doing it for a little over three months um and we've only started just recently going hard at it but in three months i think we're over fourteen thousand subscribers and we're almost at our viewer hours for monetization so it's about to cross over into being monetized already so the goal is to keep doing that, to keep using the money and the sponsors from that, to keep doing bigger and better shoots. And the goal eventually is just to see the world together as a family and film it and film it for other people that can't see the world. And, you know, hopefully it helps them relax because we've been in an industry for, again, for 15, 16 years where our job was not to relax. It was to make excitement, exciting, exciting, more and more and more, bigger, better, bigger, outdo this person, blah, 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 blah. We've got world records for it. And I just... I don't want to do that anymore, man. We want to, we want to just simplify. If people want to watch it, cool. If people don't want to watch it, cool. But we don't have to be there appeasing thousands of people anymore. That's just, that's what we're doing. That very long winded description of what we're doing. And yes, the wrestling will sometimes be a part of it. But like, as I told you, um, it, it would probably, it won't be like in ring stuff. It'll only be like backstage stuff and like things that our family does and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. I hope so. Thank you. I hope so. I hope I'm entertaining. Uh, I hope I'm me and my family are entertaining enough without me having to make an ass out of myself all the time. <laughs> you know, like I do, like Mr. Gomez does. One one can hope, right? One can hope. One, one dare to dream. I love it. <laughs> well, what about everything else, man? You you plugged the new YouTube. Is anything else you want to plug? Oh man, what's the joke that me and Candy like now because we see it on TV? I'm just projecting gratitude, you know, manifesting abundance. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> we're, we're creators now um like you know obviously generation championship wrestling is still a thing i i like wrestling again my like i said um storm in august helped me like wrestling again august is booking now he's he's the, he's got the pencil in the company um yes he reports to me but guess what he doesn't have to because he's got everything in in our locker room where it needs to be and i think our core locker room is we actually freaking all like each other and which is really cool um there's not people trying to outshine other people except for august and uh, <laughs> mr belt guy and i don't know we've got um we're not trying to like i'm not trying to do a million shows a year anymore just for the sake of doing another show so our next wrestling show is until september 14th which is my next big festival which is going to be a really big one it's our second time doing chocolate fest this year we're already looking at like i, I think it's around ten thousand people coming already so that's when the next wrestling show is. That's when my next festival is. And that's the next time I actually have to get off my ass and work that job. And until then I'll be filming, 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 having a crazy AI drone following me around everywhere. See if people enjoy it. it. His name is Jeremy Gomez and he is Zen. Now I will say Zen than ever. I will say this. The next wrestling show is going to have some pretty freaking crazy drone shots and drone footage like during the show. And during the matches, that we're going to do some. I've, I've I've fallen into the world of AI drones, and they're freaking crazy. So um, the next show is going to have some pretty cool shots, some pretty cool angles, and some pretty different stuff. And we'll see how it looks. It might be a complete failure, and all my haters can can pick on me and say how much I suck and I can't accomplish shit. But sometimes when you try new things that haven't been done a million times, sometimes you fail. But you're not going to know until you try. But anyways, didn't mean to interject, but. 
the next show is going to have some cool shit and people should probably be there and watch it. And it's free, so be there. Let's talk hydration. See, I carry something to drink with me every single place that I go because I am concerned about being dehydrated. It runs in the family. Everything from dry mouth, dizzy spells, fainting. It's pretty serious. And I've tried all the different types of waters and sports drinks. Let me tell you something right now. Liquid IV. That has been the most efficient at keeping me hydrated and doing so pretty quickly. Okay, Liquid IV has five essential vitamins and is two times faster at keeping you hydrated than water alone. And I'm serious, man. Everything from vitamin C to vitamins B3, B5, B6, B12. Liquid IV also is non-GMO. So it's free from gluten, dairy, soy. So for all you folks out there with food allergies, this may be right up your alley. And I know what you're thinking, but how does it taste, Duke? Well, it tastes pretty good. Okay, we're talking my favorite in pina colada. We also have tropical punch, strawberry, new flavors like sea berry and strawberry lemonade. Huh. You can enjoy this stuff, man. But don't take my word for it. I want you to stop what you're doing right now and head over to liquidiv.com. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling so you get 20% off your entire order. I mean, anything that you order on liquidiv.com. So what are you waiting for? It's time for you to shop better hydration today. Use the promo code Duke Loves Wrestling over at liquidiv.com. Save yourself 20%. Stay hydrated. Most importantly, enjoy life. That's right. So next time, be kind to yourselves and be kind to others. Take it away, Tony Schiavone. This is Tony Schiavone, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling. <laughs>